Let's say we're asked to find the domain of f over g of x if the function f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 8 and g of x is equal to the function square root of 1 plus x. First, we analyze the two functions individually. So for f of x, can you think of a number that you can't plug into this function? Answer hopefully is no. There is no number that we can't square and then multiply by 2. You can't think of a number that you can't multiply by itself, and then whatever answer you get, you multiply by 2, and then you take 8 away from that new number. This will always be possible with any x value that you choose. So that's why we say that the domain for f of x is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Looking at g of x, we remember that it's a radical function. If, it, uh, if we have a radical function, the radicand must be positive or zero. So in order to identify where or for which values of x that happens, we can set the radicand 1 plus x to be greater than or equal to zero. We can solve this very simply by moving the 1 to the other side. And when we do that, we get x is greater than or equal to negative 1. We can place this on a number line to make our life a little bit easier. And here, if we plug in a number to the right of negative 1, say 0, that will yield a true statement. That means we're going to be finding the square root of a positive number. So all the numbers to the right of negative 1 are fair game. They are included in the domain. Anything to the left of negative 1, say negative 2, if I were to plug negative 2 into this function, 1 minus 2 will give me a negative 1. I cannot find the square root of a negative number. So this indicates that the domain will be from negative 1 to infinity with a square bracket around negative 1 because I can find the square root of negative 1. Please pay very, very close attention to the negative 1 itself. It's going to play a very important role shortly. Now hopefully you remember that f over g of x is simply the quotient of the two given functions f of x and g of x. And if I write it as such, I get my equation as 2x squared minus 8 all over the square root of 1 plus x. Now in order to find the domain of this function, I have to make sure that the denominator is never 0 because it's a rational function or it's a rational expression. And also, I need to make sure that the inside of the radical always stays positive. So if it can't be 0 and it must be positive, the only option I have is to set 1 plus x to be greater than 0. Notice here that this is not greater than or equal to. If I made this equal to, there, was, there would be one number for which this inside would be 0, and then I wouldn't be able to find... Well, I would be able to find the square root of 0, but I wouldn't be able to divide by 0. So that's why we throw away the little half equals that's fused to it, and we solve this strict inequality. We solve it the same way. The 1 moves to the other side, yielding x is greater than negative 1. And just like we did before, we can stick this on a number line. And for the same exact reasons I shared previously, all the numbers to the right of negative 1 will satisfy the inequality. All the numbers to the left will not. So the domain of this new function that we got is from negative infinity to infinity with the intersection of negative 1 to infinity, which came from right here, intersection with negative 1 to infinity with excluding the negative 1, which comes from right here. Now this looks very messy, but if we put it on a number line, that actually makes a lot more sense, and visually it seems to become easier. So the white line represents the interval from negative infinity to infinity, and over on top of this, I'm going to graph negative 1 to infinity with a square bracket. That means that this point is included and all the numbers to the right are fair game. The last interval in yellow indicates negative 1 to infinity, but excluding negative 1, indicated by this open circle here. Now remember, with intersections, we're looking for what's in common. What, where is the overlap between all three intervals? 
and hopefully you'll recognize that it's right there in that region. Here, we don't have a blue line, so there can't be an overlap, or you can't have things in common between the blue and the white because the blue doesn't exist here. Same thing for the yellow curve, or for the yellow uh, line. Now, the one thing that I need you to be careful of is the number negative one itself. Negative one is included in the white interval. It is included in the blue one, but it is not included in the yellow one. So that's why when we look for the overlap, we're looking for the overlap of all three intervals, not just two of them. We need to make sure that one interval that's the intersection satisfies each one of these three. And the only way to do that is to exclude the negative one from our final answer. So the domain of f over g of x is actually from negative one to infinity, excluding the negative one, and obviously excluding the infinity as well.